and welcome back to Trash Talk with the New Providence Ecology Park. And I am here with the compost king himself, Mr. Nicholas Fox. So, Nick, yes. I, I call you Nick, right? Yeah, you call me Nick. All right, so, Nicky. Um, whoa, whoa. Nick. Nick. Not Nicky. Not Nicky. Yeah, that's my sister. So, Nick. Just okay, Nick. so, Nick. Yeah. Nikolai. Um, <laughs> I want to get started on my compost right away. Yeah. I want to contribute to the environment. What, I mean, me and a couple of people I know, what that's physical material, thing. that's a great thing. It's you community. community yeah, yeah, I love that. We, it's for Bahamians, by for. Bahamians. By, so Bahamians yeah. have to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, so, what physical materials do I need to get started right away? Let's start with tools. Okay. So you all have your, your compost buckets that you guys were collecting your food waste in. Right. You need your yard clippings, your browns, to match your greens, right. which is your food waste. Your, if you want it to be nice and easier, a shovel or a pitchfork or something to flip your pile with. Yeah, not, mm -hmm. And you need something to break down, like physically break down your fruit waste and your browns. Because remember, everything's about surface area. Mm -hmm. You want to cut up your browns and you want to crush and mash up your food waste. Because the more surface area you have and the more things that are mixing together, mm -hmm the bed it's going to break down. You're, the rat ain't going to come and steal a whole apple out your compost. Right, because you know? rat is teeth. Teeth. So, you're saying browns and you're saying greens. Explain what they are for the persons who don't know. Okay, so compost is broken down into two main segments or two main elements. Nitrogen waste and carbon waste, right? I wouldn't say waste, but items. Your carbon is something like your thatch hat. Mm -hmm. that, is more, that has more carbon in it than nitrogen. Your food waste, something like a plant or an apple has nitrogen, nitrogenous waste right. or nitrogenous content. Nitrogenous. That's, that's higher than the carbon content. Okay. And they have a ratio. And you want to have a balance between carbon and nitrogen that makes sure it, it breaks on properly. Okay? Okay. So when it when you have too much nitrogen, smelly pile. Right. When you have too much carbon, it's a slow pile and it, it takes a very long time to break down. So let's say you only had yeah, like let's say you had a thousand thatch hats and you nobody wanted to buy them or anything and they they broke down in the rain, they take a long time for them to break down. Got you. So now I got my outdoor compost. Compost. Mm -hmm. What's the best location for it? You need a you need at least like thirty feet away from your house. Just to thirty make, feet. Thirty feet. Oh. Cause no, my house like right where next. I live. Yeah, we right next to each other, like we right. don't even have a backyard. We just got you a and your four, gate on you the and your four, your four people who you composting with, all of y'all live right next to each other. No, no. So I wouldn't really recommend you. I compost because yeah. of my. I mean. So what's we, the best place to, to to set up your compost? Well, in that case, you would opt for a compost pickup service, okay. such as myself. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the yard space, and you start composting too close to your house, it's gonna create problems with pests and so on and so and forth. Scent. And scent. Especially so the like, smell bad. Yeah, compost, when it starts to break down and you have like 400, 500 pounds of food waste, mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna start to heat up a lot, like 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And, and you don't so want that. get hot. And get hot, hot. Because that's, that's the temperature of my house on a regular day, because I don't have no fans. <laughs> so if it starts to smell, mm -hmm. you know, my neighbors can start making, start yeah, making noise. Yeah, they can start making noise and they can call people. And what is the reason that causes it to smell and how can you eradicate eradicate that? So all composts have specific aromas mm -hmm. because keep in mind, this is like cooking, right? As the compost heats up, it's retaining heat, it's it's releasing moisture, all that water content is slowly evaporating. Okay. And that is gonna that is coming from a place where like microbes and certain organic life mm -hmm. they're constantly living and dying and reproducing so on and so forth so that decay is going to release a smell as a byproduct of that decay okay i heard something about earth um worms adding worms to your compost do you yeah. recommend that over time when you first start composting the worms will not be able to inhabit the compost because it's so hot you put your hand in that compost you might lose it that's how hot it is okay but jeez as that's scary <laughs> Yeah, as the compost pile cools down, earthworms are naturally gonna come in and finish off the things that are hardier, that took a longer time to break down. It's like a, it's a, like a earthworm buffet. 
yeah, it's like a, it's like a motel, hotel. Holiday Inn. Yeah. For earthworms. Yeah. Naturally. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to add. No, as your it. compost breaks down, it's going to start attracting the roly polies and the worms, maybe a couple of centipede, all them type of things. I don't want the centipede. Nobody does. Okay, Nobody, so last yeah. question. How long does it take, in short, how long does it take your compost to be ready? For me, I have a system where my compost is ready in just about 30 days to six weeks. A month. Yeah. So that's where I say composting is a lot more difficult because it's all about how you prepare your compost, how you maintain your compost, and how you um, progress your compost along that path to being ready. But let's say you and your friends just compost and turn your pile once a week, you know. It's going to take a much longer, much longer time. time. So three to six months is the average compost like completion time. So you got to have patience and dedication. Yeah. yeah and even can. a little bit of passion for it. Yeah, most definitely. Because you got a lot of passion for it. I do. Let's say the first time you see a, a roach fly at you when you flip the pile. That operation gets shut down immediately. Yeah. And you, for the average payment, I just get a roach. Don't compost and no slippers. Because them sanopy will go for your toes. And I don't see why we got to call the experts. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Nicholas Fox, the expert, the mm -hmm. compost king. And we are talking about compost because you can get into it too. We'll be right back.